First, let's start with Lord Baldo. He was on the social media app, uh, platform formerly known as Twitter. And he was taking issues with uh, people commenting on his case. So he decided to respond as he does. Uh, Le Bon Quebec says, Does this make sense or am I missing something? It seems that if you are making your lawyer's job harder, then your lawyer would just quit. Or does that lawyer not just not care that Nick is apparently making himself look bad, as most of you guys are saying? It seems unethical. This is a comment in regards to... Uh, Rakeda objecting himself in court um, without w against the advice of his attorney, um, who was appointed to him in his child custody case. And then he dismissed that attorney and hired um, his attorney from his cocaine case uh, as his child uh, child custody case attorney as well. So people were discussing the objection and if it was a farcical objection or, or you know, whatever. And Rakeda responds and says, The thing you're missing is that lawyer representing me at that hearing is a walking malpractice factory. Why do you think the county loves having her appointed in virtually every child protection case? So in that statement, he is alleging that Candy, Ohio County knowingly appoints a walking malpractice factory, an incompetent attorney, two indignant defendants in child protective custody cases, specifically to try and deprive them of rights via competent counsel and uh, presumably take away their children, which is just another layer of this grand conspiracy against him, apparently. A potentially criminal, Sean, says... My whole point about Nick's critique is that he admits he has no experience in this area regarding child custody. He has relatively no experience in a courtroom, and his logic is going to be clouded due to his emotional investment. That's why his attorney was there. They can think clearly. He can't. And this is true. Uh, I know for a fact that if, even if attorneys get in trouble, they have attorneys. Because that attorney... Like, you, when you are involved in something especially when it comes to law you get like this tunnel vision you start reading things and, and looking at statutes and you, you hone in on what looks like your lifeline and you start going this is it this is it i'm gonna file and i'm gonna really hammer this point and i'm gonna get what i want but then in doing so you really miss the forest for the trees and you end up fucking up you you miss important procedural things and you uh, over overlook important things that you should have filed a defense for and so on and so forth. And that's where an attorney uh, helps you a lot. And the other thing with an attorney is that if you represent yourself, um, when, when you have an attorney and that attorney says things, that attorney's words can't be used against you. But if you represent yourself, then what you say in your own defense can be used against you. It's kind of like taking the stand. That's why people don't take the stand because you, you can be fucked with. Um, but if you represent yourself, then you're always basically on stand, and everything that you say is used against you. So there's reasons why you don't you have an attorney, even as an attorney um, in a criminal case. Rakeda says, Sean is talking out of his ass. Generally, those were bad lawyers. They knew literally nothing about us or our case. Can't wait to fully talk about all of this. Uh, someone named Scott Jonesy asks, Sean is a practicing, spelled British, Britoid detected, Angloid detected, uh, uh. It says, Sean is a practicing lawyer who isn't up on his felony for having an ongoing CPS situation. He's also not got debt collectors after him. XX. That's a very British thing saying kiss kiss at the end. You mother weirdo. Arakeda says, Sean is a practicing lawyer in a different jurisdiction with different rules, talking about practice area that is not his main expertise. Um, so this is Le Bonkebert again saying, Law to Shim, I'm watching you talk about Nick's issues with his attorneys not returning his calls and leaving him out in the cold with an, out an advocate. You mentioned how his lawyers know he's a druggie and how bad of a parent he is, etc. I have a question. Sean says, my whole point about Nick's critique is that he admits he has no experience in this area. He has relatively no experience in the courtroom and his logic is going to be clouded. I read that. Arcadia replies and says, yeah, I'm familiar with the rules of evidence, Sean. Apparently, amazingly, my attorney was not. She didn't know the rules of completeness even existed. No, I'm not kidding. She had numerous hearsay objections, surprise, and other legal avenues such as continuous, etc. She had no thoughts. You don't know which situation. You don't know the situation at all because it isn't like shaped like a sandwich. 
Calm down for that. Okay, so the whole thing. His, uh, he was upset because in the child protective case, there was a health and human services uh, person on the stand. She said something that was hearsay. Hearsay is she heard something and she repeats it. So she heard something and she said that she heard something and that's hearsay. And that's generally inadmissible in court. You can't testify that you heard somebody say something. Uh, that is not considered a reliable testimony. So if someone was on the stand and you're like, how did you know that Sean was eating a sandwich on August the 14th? And they said, well, I heard from Nick Ricada that he was eating that ah, objection hearsay. You can't say that. And then they said, no, nope, you can't, you can't testify that you heard somebody say something. So you would say, well, I don't know them. However, chat, there is an objection to Ricada is saying, I have it on good authority from a practicing attorney in the state of Minnesota that Ricada actually doesn't know the rules of evidence in Minnesota. See, child custody cases exist in a special dimension that rules don't apply evenly in. And there is a relaxed standard of evidence that applies in these cases. And guess what? Hearsay is admissible in a child protective custody case, which is why the lawyer didn't object to hearsay, because when the hearsay comes from a reputable person, such as a health and human services employee, it's allowed in the court. And that's what the judge apparently told him to his fucking face when he objected to it in the, in the transcripts and said that actually this testimony is permissible. Um, and surprise, surprise, his lawyer knew that and he didn't, and he looked like a fucking retard. And even now on Twitter, he apparently doesn't know um, that his objection was overruled because the standard of evidence in child cases is different than the standard of evidence in criminal cases. Sucks to suck. This, let me put it up on the big screen. Josh, I love you. Let's have a shower talk. No. That's, right, that's way back in the history. <laughs> This retard is still trying to argue his way out of being a loser, basically. He's trying to argue his way out of a lot. And he doesn't understand that you can't just convince people on the internet and win. That's not how it works. Um, there's one other thing related to Ricada. Chat, I'm famous on the internet again. Fox Stein, KMSP, Kiwi Farms founder, argues for camera and courtroom for Nick Ricada's case. Published by the Fox 9 staff, August 12th, 2024, Minneapolis Fox 9, the founder of stalking website Kiwi Farms, filed motions last week asking a judge to broadcast future criminal proceedings against popular YouTube attorney Nick Ricada. What do we know? An attorney for Joshua Moon, who goes online by his username Null, filed several documents last week fighting for hearings again and the trial against Ricada to be streamed. In the filings, Moon's attorney argued that there's a lot of online interest in the case and point to the fact that Ricada has made a living analyzing trial live streams. Ricada said last week during a stream on his YouTube channel that Moon had also pushed for the release of other documents and body camera video of the arrest. <sighs> Seems like there's a lot of interest in this case, Chad. If only there was some way to get um, rumors regarding it dispelled. If only there was a competent authority in Candy, Ohio County that had access to certain audiovisual effects that might help the general public regain some confidence in the legal system chat. Even Fox 9 in Minneapolis agrees. <laughs> this other shit's just like recap of already, no? Um, I wrote them, by the way. I wonder if I got an update. Do I have an update? I wrote them and I said... Nope, still says stalking website. <laughs> I said I took issue with it being called a stalking website because that doesn't make any fucking sense. How does a website stalk people? Um, it also implies that everybody on the forum is criminal, which is not obviously not the case. And I uh, asked them to explain something for me in the article, and they did not. Shame, chat. Shame, shame on Fox 9 came SP from Minneapolis. They failed. They failed the public in their reporting is how I'll say that. Shameful. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.